And tonight on our Great Great American panel, he is a policy advisor at Economics 21, a blogger for National Review Online, and an online columnist for The Daily. Raihan Salam is here, and he is the author of the brand new book, Me, Governor, My Life in the Rough and Tumble World of New Jersey Politics. Former Democratic uh, New Jersey governor, one of the few to survive, Richard Cody is here, and she was Miss America 2008. Kirsten Hagelin, once again, is back with us. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Our pleasure. All right, so President Crybaby, and I say this because he's nearly been president three years. Mr. President, put your pants on. Stop blaming people for everything. It's, he takes no responsibility. Storms out of this meeting tonight. This is in the political, Eric Cantor saying. Shove back, I'll see you tomorrow, walks out. Then he says, Eric, don't you call my bluff. Uh, he said, warning Cantor that he's going to take, quote, his case to the American people. No other president, not Ronald Reagan, would put up with the treatment that poor C President Crybaby was getting from the House Majority Leader. I, what, is the, what is this? I think it's ridiculous, and I, I'm actually proud of the Republican leadership that is taking ownership of the fact this is why they got elected, to stand right. up to the president in these hard times, say, we're not going to raise revenue. We don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem, and Obama doesn't want to take it. Did and you raise taxes as a Democrat? No, I didn't, but they do have a spending problem and a revenue problem. There's no revenue problem. No. Oh, wait, wait, if you don't have enough revenue to meet your obligations and you default, you, we have a huge problem. But on, so these thing. people will have to get in the room, stay in the room, until they can put a reasonable compromise. And I think Bonnier and uh, McConnell, yeah. Bayer, uh, are uh, that reasonable, and I think they can do it. The problem is the Republican Party is so split. You have people, they have the core constituency of business who's saying you can't default, and then you have the radical right saying, hey, let it default. We don't no, care. No, 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 wait, but excuse oh, me. Come wait, on. Excuse me. Blow excuse it up. Me. The radical left spent us into oblivion. The we radical did? They did? Barack Obama nearly five trillion dollars in debt, one point six five trillion this year. Pelosi five what was, trillion what was is the speaker of the that house. George Bush got. Forget from, it. From listen, Clinton. we had to fight a war. Nine eleven impacted the economy. But wait a minute. No, in eight years. George Bush didn't accumulate the deficit, the debt that Barack Obama did in less than three. So who, excuse yeah, me. But who got us into this recession? Excuse me. Well, who got how do we get in, how we get here? Who made it worse with a failed no, stimulus? Wait, no, how did we get here? How did because we get here by under, a under the Bush, model? Under the Bush administration, the banks gave everybody a mortgage. They were yeah, under unregulated, Bill Clinton. unregulated, this as a policy unregulated, unregulated. So what happened was the housing market collapse dramatically you're, you're short. President what's President Crybaby's here? narrative. Go what's ahead. happening no, no. here is that there was a political gamble. The Democrats sure made a political gamble and the Republicans made a political gamble. And the President's political gamble was, why didn't he push for a debt ceiling increase when he had the lame duck Congress and they had a lot of leverage? They could have said that we're not going to do this tax cut deal unless we get this debt limit increase. They did it because they thought, aha, this is our opportunity to split those Republicans in two and teach Bingo. them a thing or two. And then they're finding that, well, wait a second, some of these Republicans are serious. Some of them mean business. And look, I've got to say, I'm terrified about a default. I think that's very bad news. And I want to see some kind of deal happen. But I also think that right. this is How the about president this? making so a I political gamble that doesn't turn out well. How about dollar for dollar, the Republicans have one house. So the president's using scare tactics, using seniors scaring the crap out of them yeah. uh, unnecessarily. Social security. All right, Social Security, using class warfare. So Republicans say, okay. We're going to save Social Security. We're going to save our defense. We're going to save the disabled. We'll raise the debt ceiling so we don't default. And we're going to have a dollar in cuts uh, for every dollar in debt increase. And then let the president default. Absolutely. Put it on his that's, desk. That's, what, that's exactly what they need to do. And, and they've, you know, Goldman Sachs came out with a study that said even if they don't increase the debt limit by August 2nd, they're still no. going to be able to send out Social Security checks. I have the money here. The, have the, have the president the lied to the American... Wait a minute, Governor. The president lied to the American people and lied to seniors. I have the... We take in $200 billion a month. We have, we have Medicare, Medicaid, 50 billion, Social Security, 49, the debt, 29 billion. You're roughly 125 billion short. No, we're not. Well, sure the, you are. the problem is sure you're you soon getting into military pay and a lot of other right, stuff exactly. that we do not want. That's all None of that's included. No, no. You, you can pay Social Security, you can pay Medicaid and Medicare, but you can't pay the Army, you can't pay the right. Excuse me, you're Nobody wrong. I'll employees. give it to you when we get back. We have to take a quick break. <sighs> and we'll continue with our great American panel uh, straight ahead.